Am I the a-hole for refusing to include my stepbrother in my social life, resulting in him having no friends? My mom cheated on my dad with my stepdad. I know it's wrong. But because of how their relationship started, I went into the situation having made up my mind I would hate them. However, I found out that I'm going to have a stepbrother John, so I thought I would be nice to him since he didn't have anything to do with the divorce. They moved into my city last summer from a nearby town, so my stepbrother would be joining my school as the new kid. We're in 11th grade, so everyone already knows each other and the social circles have been established since like elementary school, and nobody's nice to new kids. We've had assemblies because new kids have a hard time making friends. Because of this, my mom asked me to introduce John to my friends, which I agreed to because I don't want him to be alone. Well, John is a complete piece of turd, and he has been a piece of turd since the day I met him. He makes at least one comment a day about my stepdad is better than my dad. It makes jokes about my mom cheating. I've told my mom and she could not care less. It is telling me I need to learn how to figure it out on my own. I want to be clear that he is the one that started it. And he started saying stuff like this within an hour of meeting me. Since he came in in the summer, we were arguing for like three months before school. So on the first day, he was expecting that he would follow me around and meet my friends, and I told him to buzz off and figure it out himself. He looked like a deer in headlights because he didn't know anyone. Fast forward to now, almost done with the school year, and I was right. As expected, John has made almost no friends, and usually eats lunch alone. We have one class in common, and I don't acknowledge him, but he sits in the back and keeps to himself. I guess his dad realized recently that he had no friends, but he asked my mom to talk to me. And my mom asked me if I introduced him to my friends, and I told her that I didn't, because he's been bullying me for over a year for no reason. She got upset and saying John has no friends because of me. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole at all. He's what, 17? Surely he is capable of seeking out and making his own friends. Beyond the fact that you owe him nothing because it sounds like a total toolbox. Nah, my school is actually really mean. Kids don't talk to anyone that's not in their clique. Unless you've been in my district since you were a little kid, you're not going to make friends. You'll have classmates you're friendly with at best. We've had assemblies about this because parents of new kids have transferred them before because of stuff like this. I knew from the start that if I left him on his own, he would be alone. What an awful school. Not stay home, but as someone who moved around a lot as a kid, that entire culture sounds so freaking toxic. I grew up in a small community and it is 100% this. Even in high school, a lot of the cliques were formed from when you went to elementary school. People did make some friends early in high school, but it was very cliquey and part of the reason was geography. The high school fit in from all the small towns around. So while you went to school with a variety of people, very few actually lived in your town. And if you moved to that town, you had a problem that not only had everyone known each other since kindergarten, a lot of their parents had known each other too. Not day home. If his father was so concerned about his kid having a social life, he should have thought about that before raising him to be a bully. You are under no obligation to do anything. He isn't your family. He is just the son of the man who ruined your family. I feel a bit bad for John. Who knows what his life was like before they moved? In being yanked out of his school and made to move into another house. He probably needs therapy. But until he does some self-reflection, I think Opie should keep his space unless John shows real remorse. Not just sad that he is lonely. Next story. Am I the a-hole for naming my daughter the same thing as her half-sister? Last summer, I-33 female started sleeping with this guy, 45 male. In December, I found out I was pregnant. And while I'm pro-choice, I decided to keep it. I was already feeling like we were at the beginning of the end relationship-wise. So I said, look, I'm pregnant. I've made this decision, but it's up to you if you want to be involved. And it's okay if you want to bail. I have the resources to do this alone. He said a baby wasn't something you wanted. And I said that's totally fine. I won't even put your name down on a birth certificate. We can treat this like a sperm donor situation. He agreed. After that, he predictably started pulling away and we broke up. Three months post-breakup, when I was six and a half months pregnant, this woman DMs me and says, Hey, were you sleeping with my husband until recently? It turns out that he had a wife and a 13-year-old daughter. 
His wife was slash is in the process of getting a divorce from him and gathering evidence of what turned out to be a wild amount of infidelity. So she was relatively cordial and believed me when I said I had no clue. Even before we'd broken up, I told him that if it was a girl, I wanted to name her Samantha. Samantha isn't the actual name, but it's a similar long girly name with multiple nicknames. It was my sister's name before she passed away. And even before that, it was a name I loved for aesthetic reasons. We always talked about naming our daughters after one another before she passed. He expressed dislike, but I jokingly but not really said it wasn't really his decision. After everything came out in the open, I found out that the reason he was against the name was because his 13-year-old daughter was named Samantha. Now that everything is out in the open, he said, So what are you going to name her? And I said, What do you mean? I already told you, Samantha. And he said, You can't do that. That's my other daughter's name. I said that he lost naming privileges a long time ago. And if anyone asked, I was happy to make it clear that I'd been the one to pick the name. I also reminded him that I still wasn't obligating him to be involved in this in any way. And given how he'd lied, I frankly didn't want him to be. But if and when he chose to be involved, I was going to hold him to it and expect child support slash visitation slash etc. Which from his point of view is not ideal because he doesn't want the responsibility of care. And especially doesn't want the responsibility of child support and asset splitting. Rather, he wants to have his cake and eat it too. I take on all the responsibility. There's no paternity test, a blank father's name on the birth certificate, but he still gets to have opinions, which frankly suits me as well because I don't want to be legally tied to him. But when I told my friend, she said that while he didn't deserve any courtesy, it was an unkind thing to do his 13-year-old. How do you think your daughter is going to feel when she finds she has an older half-sister with the same name? And she will find out. There are currently around 50 comments, and as far as I can tell, this is the only one that mentions how the OP's future daughter might feel in the future. Surely that should be one of the first considerations. It seems like that could be covered by... It was my late sister's name, who meant a lot to me, and I chose it before I knew about your sperm donor's other family. Right? Tell her early that she's named after her late aunt and her half-sister having the same name is a funny coincidence. Assuming the real name is equally as common as Samantha, she's going to know at least a few at school anyway. Everyone sucks here. You and the father to be exact. Him for the cheating, you for the naming. I know a lot of people are going to say, name your kid whatever you want. But is it really in her best interest? How do you think your daughter is going to feel like when she'll find out she has a sister with the same name? What about her sister? How do you think she's going to feel about having a little sister named like her? Especially as she probably won't get to spend that much time with her with a the father they have. For me, it's horrible for both girls. If you name your child Samantha, then your child is never going to have a relationship with her older half-sibling. No one is going to be able to recover enough from finding out that your sister, who your dad had during an affair that caused him and your mom to be divorced, has the same name as you. This is how it will all look from the older Samantha's point of view. And she will not like younger Samantha ever because of it. If she has to share her name with her. So if you intend there to be a sibling relationship, you might want to consider making Samantha a middle name and looking at the meaning of Samantha and finding another name with the same meaning to become the first name. So there's no a-hole here. It's just about what you intend for your child now you know they have a sibling. Next story is titled... Am I the a-hole for skipping my mother's fifth wedding to go to a job interview at ASTA? For the past few months, I-26 female have been unemployed and desperate for a job. And I finally got an opportunity for a job at ASDA, a popular British supermarket. But the date overlapped with my 52-year-old mother's fifth wedding. Over the span of my life, my mother has been in over 50 relationships, only five lasting more than two months. As a child, this really distressed me as I had many random men coming into my house frequently, and my mom was pretty much neglecting me throughout this. My dad left when I was four after my mother cheated on him with six guys. I found this out a lot later, and I didn't have contact with him until I was 18. After all of my mother's relationships and four divorces, she finally insists she has found a right man and invited me to their wedding two weeks before my interview, and I realized they were the same date. 
I figured that going to the interview would benefit me more than the wedding and decided to go to the interview instead. I assumed my mother wouldn't mind as I had attended every wedding before that, but I was wrong. She was very angry at me, and my whole family have been calling to tell me how much of a nail I am for missing my mother's big day. I did get the job though, and now I am financially stable enough to afford rent for my one-bedroom flat, and I do not regret a thing. Am I the a-hole? Not stay home. You'll catch the next one. Seriously, there's never been a more appropriate time to play that card. You got the job. Congrats. Tell mommy you'll catch her on wedding number six. Thank you. I'm doing really well now, other than my family being mad. Not stay home. I have a rule. I attend only one of each of the major life event parties per person. You'll only see me at one of your weddings, one baby shower, one divorce party, one funeral. All others get an RSVP regrets response. Okay, maybe I'd go to a second funeral because you don't see those every day. You'll be at the second funeral like, y'all sure this time? While poking the body. I love all the snarky comments telling her you'll come to her sixth, but if you need an actually productive thing to tell her, apologize for the unavoidable conflict, just to keep the peace, and tell her you'd love to take her out to dinner slash make them dinner to celebrate their first anniversary next year, either on the date or near it, if they want that date for something special just for them. But set a price limit if you go out. That could get rough. Not stay all for sure. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my child's mother stay with me? Don't want to get too far into the relationship aspect, so I'll bullet point it. Started dating Kara at 16, married at 22. Our, me slash Kara both 36, daughter came when we were 23. When our daughter was 6, Kara came to me asking for an open relationship. She said she had gotten bored and wasn't sure I was her forever person. I told her that wouldn't be happening. She said she wanted a divorce then. We went through that whole process and we ended up splitting custody. I later learned that she had been talking to other guys before we ever had our talk. So, safe to say I'm not a huge fan of her anymore. We have no contact outside of pickup times. I typically don't ask my daughter questions about my ex unless it's of vital importance. But I did notice about five months ago that Kara had changed pickup locations to an apartment complex. I asked my daughter what happened, as I knew Kara had remarried four-ish years ago and my daughter told me that the guy kicked her and her mom out after they divorced. I asked what happened, and my daughter told me that her mom found out she was infertile and the dude divorced her on the spot. I wasn't too worried about the situation as my daughter appeared fine emotionally, took her to therapy to make sure and she wasn't complaining about the apartment. So last week, my ex showed up at my door asking if she could talk to me. She said she had no money after her apartment raised rent. She was struggling to provide for our daughter and her ex took a lot of her money in the divorce. She was probably gonna get evicted at the end of the month. She asked if she could live with me for a few months till she could save up for a place. I told her absolutely not and that I'd probably go back to the court and seek a custody alteration because I'm not gonna have my daughter in an unstable environment. My ex told me that won't happen and she'll fight that in court. I told her she didn't have the money for rent, let alone a lawyer. So maybe she shouldn't fight it and instead work on finding somewhere to live. So my daughter has learned about a situation. I was speaking on the phone to my parents about it and I think she overheard me. And she's furious at me, saying that we have plenty of space. I have a five-bedroom house with an in-law suite in the basement. It's a walkout and it has a full kitchen. So my daughter thinks it's cruel I won't let her mom stay in the basement for a few months when we hardly go down there. I told her that wouldn't be happening as her mother has made her own decisions. It is not my responsibility. Also, I didn't say this to my daughter. I've become an attractive option to divorced women. Pool definitely helps. Lol. So I don't want my ex-wife living here because it could look bad to some of the women I hang out with. Kara texted me and offered to pay for utilities and do chores if that would change my mind. My daughter really wants me to help, but I don't feel like it. And I frankly don't really want to help this woman. I like my house situation the way it is. Am I the a-hole? Not stay home. But if you don't want to permanently damage your relationship with your daughter, I suggest going to a family therapist to work it out with her in a structured setting. She's 13. 
if I did the math correctly, and this is an impactful time in her life. If not handled properly, she could resent you for the rest of your life. Therapy isn't the magic wand you can wave to make the daughter feel okay about this. She's perfectly entitled to feel unhappy that her dad won't help her mom. That doesn't mean that Opie should move his ex in if he doesn't want to. Just that he can't wish away his daughter's feelings about that choice. This. A thousand times this. Therapy has potential, but there are so many obstacles involved in getting proper therapy. Get therapy is usually what people say when they just don't want to deal with you anymore. Not that there aren't some genuinely concerned people out there, but they don't often know the obstacles involved. Not day hall for not letting your ex live with you. People saying you're the a-hole for this can't conceive of the problems with this. Don't let her move in. However, you're the a-hole for putting your daughter in the middle of this. Don't quiz her about your ex. She's now playing you because you established this possibility by pumping her for info. Agree. If he lets her move in, she'll never leave. The daughter will yell at him for kicking her mom out. Better to get full custody until the mom is able to get her own place and steady income. Not stay whole, but think of helping X out, for your daughter's sake. Not by letting her move in, but maybe a loan or a gift of money to help her get back on her feet. Once your daughter is 18, wash your hands of it. But consider it while your daughter is young. Bad idea to give X the money, because she will see Opie as a future bank account whenever she is in a difficult situation of her own making. Opie does not owe his ex a thing. She cheated on him and wanted a divorce. She made her bed and now needs to sleep in it. And she needs to stop using the daughter's leverage to play Opie and guilt trip him to let her move in. Do not let her move in, Opie, for your own sanity and stability for your bank account.